Hey peeps, welcome to Sparrow Springs. My name is Sarah and today I'm going to walk you through how I made this abstract watercolor painting. So I'm going to go through all of the supplies that I use and take you step by step through the process. So let's get started. Okay, so let's first go through the supplies and I am first using Master's Touch Premium Watercolor Paper. This is eight inch by eight inch and it is cold pressed watercolor paper, which means it has some texture to it. I've taken some art tape and taped all around the edges for a nice white border. I have an assortment of watercolor brushes just to use as I want, but I don't use all of them. I'm using Arteza set 12 paints. This makes a great travel pack or starter set. You can mix a large variety of colors with this set and it comes with little metal trays that fold out. I have a spray bottle that helps me keep the paints wet and my paper when needed. I use two containers for water. One is for cleaning brushes and the other for mixing paint. It's so important to have a clean water jar. You don't wanna mix with dirty water. I'm using India ink to add some high contrast areas this is waterproof, so once it's dry, it shouldn't bleed. I also use this little cap to dip into. It's actually the uh, cap to my spray bottle, so it's multi-purpose. I use a small syringe to add water to my reservoirs so I don't have to go back and forth with a brush several times. I'm using rubbing alcohol for an added effect. Today, the name of the game is texture. So I'm also using some rubber cement for a resist. I do recommend rubber cement over frisket for this particular painting, which I will explain later. Some paper towels or a rag for drying brushes or dabbing off excess paint. So the last thing I do before I start painting is I just put a few drops of water on each palette so they're ready to go. I do have an extra palette off to the side as this is a little easier to use for mixing colors. And now we get to the good stuff. I'm starting off with my rubber cement. We are going to add our resist first and give it time to dry while I mix my colors. Now here is why I prefer rubber cement over frisket. Frisket tends to be really runny. And for this, I really like that drizzle that you get from the rubber cement. Remember I said texture is the name of the game for this painting. So I'm going to drizzle quite a bit on here right through the middle and let it just fan out a little bit. Next, I'm going to go in with my India ink, and I want to give this some time to dry as well. You will notice I did have some trouble with my ink. As soon as I opened the container, I could tell something was off. It just smelled horrible, and it seemed as if the ink had almost separated. I did manage to make it work, but I will likely have to get some different ink. I also knew I was being impatient, and I was carefully dabbing the ink in between the rubber cement before it was dry, so you'll see the problems that I created later. So while this is drying, I'm going to take some time to pre-mix my colors. I kind of had a fall theme in mind with some orange, red, deep purples, yellow, and when you get those last few trees hanging on, they usually have those bright green leaves. So let me show you what colors I used for each one. This first color, I kind of used a combination of yellow ochre, light cadmium red, and light cadmium yellow. I can't give you exact proportions, but I kind of just play around with colors and mix on the go anyways. Our next color was a mixture of amaranth, rust red, and light cadmium yellow. For our next color, I am doing some rust red, amaranth, and Prussian blue. For my green, I'm going in with some of this fern green and light cadmium yellow. And then my last color, I just have light cadmium yellow, just a wash. So all of these are the Arteza colors from that 12 set pack. I can link the pack in the description. Starting with my reddish color, I'm going in pretty generously and I really want a sort of organic feeling edge. So in just a second, I'm going to be moving the paint back and forth across the page and just let the paint flow as it seeps into the paper. 
As I start doing this, you'll notice the ink wasn't 100% dry and it starts to leak into my red. It's not too bad, so I will leave it alone for a little bit. To some extent, I have to let watercolor just do what it wants to do, which is something to note here that even if you follow along with me, yours may look completely different from mine, even if you follow the instructions exactly. Because it's watercolor, However, you will still have some level of control. So when I felt like the black was getting out of hand, I just dabbed it up a little bit with a paper towel. I will work a little on the other side so that I can let both of these sections dry at the same time. I'm doing a similar thing here and really working that edge. I like these hard edges because when you get a few layers going, it really looks cool. And once again, I'm tilting my paper back and forth to let the paint run and make its own shapes. Since I wanted to film this whole video in one day, I did take a hair dryer to speed up the drying process and it literally took seconds. Now you can see where the ink bled into my watercolor, but I actually really like it. The color isn't muddy and it's a neat look. We have a lot of really cool texture going on in here. So let's go ahead and add another layer. I'm going over my red with some orange and going over the purple with my red. So I want the darkest values right along that middle line. Now I'm going to go with my lighter colors and use more of a wet on wet technique. I use up the rest of my orange and dot in some of my bright green. I wanted them to slightly resemble leaf shapes and then I put a yellow wash along the bottom. I dot in some of my red and go back for a little bit of rust red and just let it bleed into those washes. I love watching watercolor bloom. I dot in some purple, but I'm not going to move this around too much because I don't want my colors to get muddy. And I still want most of my darkest values to be in the center. Then I take some rubbing alcohol and I'm going to dip my brush right into the rubbing alcohol. Don't worry, this is exclusively for my art. <laughs> and I'm going to tap my brush and just flick some of it into those wet areas and let it do its magic. We have a really cool layer down, so now I'm going to dry it completely before moving on. It's so important to dry each layer completely so you can get that beautiful edge definition. From here, even though we're not done, I'm going to remove all of the rubber cement. I really like how this is looking, but I don't want that much white. So I'm going to reapply the rubber cement so I get some white in there, but I will protect some of these colors as well. And then we can get even more bright colors overlapping. Okay, so up until this point, everything has been fairly planned out but now I'm going to just play and do what I feel like doing. At any point, you may choose to call it done, but take it as far as you wanna go. I start off by adding some bright yellow and green right on top where my rubber cement was originally. With the new rubber cement laid down, I know that I will still have white left over at the end. This was a totally impulsive move, but I grabbed some straight up amaranth and went over my bright green because I think it's going to look super awesome with the bright green just kind of popping through. And I love what it adds, so I added some more. Then I did a quick wash of purple in some areas. I'm working fast because I wanna go in with rubbing alcohol here, though I ended up not really liking what was there because it just felt like too much dark. So I dabbed it up and opted for some splatters of red. Then we add some splatters of green down below because texture. I decided to layer some more purple in the middle. At this point, my mixed colors are running low and I want some more concentrated colors. So I grabbed some rust red and added some more splatters. And guys, this is way too much fun. If you've never done this before, you need to try it. I wanna push that yellow even more. So I go in with some light cadmium yellow. And another impulsive move, I mix some light cadmium red with light cadmium yellow and fill in some more spots in the middle. And more splatters of orange. Then I decided to get super adventurous. 
and I knew this was either going to look really cool or totally ruin the piece if it was too wet. But I went in with my India ink and I did a few splatters right in the middle. At the risk of adding too much, I tried to be rather controlled with my splatters. <laughs> A little bit more with what I have left of my purple, and then I head back to the hair dryer. Remove the rubber cement and tape, and then we go from this to this. I love how this one turned out, and if you followed this tutorial, tag me on Instagram at Sparrow Springs so I can see it. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up. And there's lots of stuff coming up. I usually alternate between digital art videos and traditional art. So everything from watercolor, colored pencil, stuff in Procreate, and everything from digital painting and photo manipulation, lots of stuff. So stay tuned. And that's all for now, peeps. I will see you in the next video.